priests go from parish to parish helping with reconciliation. So whichever parish you are in, they'll call for other priests to come and assist with the sight and reconciliation. And, and we do this with schools as well. So when children in the Catholic schools are making reconciliation, you know, we go and help out. And I had this one experience where a grade, I think four-year-old and a grade four student came to confession. And after he had confessed his sins, uh, I'm sure there were not many at all, but he, he did, I asked him, um, don't you want to be the best uh, that God wants you to be? The best person God wants you to be? And he looked at me and I said, yes or no? And he said, yes, but not all the time. So he wanted to be the best, but not all the time. Today we're celebrating the memorial of St. Augustine and he said, Lord, I want to change but not yet, not now. He lived a life, a carefree life. He was a very intelligent man, a very gifted. He was always, in a way, searching for meaning and purpose in life and searching um, for God. But he searched for God and all the wrong places and the wrong avenues and it was the prayers of his mother whose memory we celebrated yesterday saint monica that brought him this grace of conversion augustine living the life he was living he was making all these choices but they were not bringing him this happiness this in a way, this love that he was desiring in his life. He was searching for this love and did not find it. And he was, his heart was so restless. And one day, he heard this voice of a child saying, take up and read. And so he heard these words as a sign from God and he picked up a Bible uh, and it was the, cha the chapter of St. Paul, and he read St. Paul. And there, precisely, St. Paul gave him words that enabled him to change his life. There were two significant people in his life that helped with his conversion. The first was his mother. His mother knew him well more than anybody else did. She never gave up on him in all the ways he was living his life. She reached out to God and prayed intensely and fasted for him. St. Augustine struggled with chastity. He had a child uh, outside marriage. And his mother knew of his struggles and she prayed for him. See, when you're searching for love, when you're searching in the wrong places, they do not bring us happiness. They might bring us momentary relief, but they don't bring us happiness. Because ultimate happiness comes only from knowing God. And so whilst in her travels to Milan, Saint Monica met with Ambrose, the bishop, the local bishop, who later became a saint himself, and Augustine and Ambrose connected. Augustine, being this brilliant mind, had all these big questions. And between Ambrose and himself, they had these long dialogues. And Augustine came to realize how much God loved him. And then Ambrose, at the age of 32, baptized Saint Augustine. Augustine then went on to live an awesome life, becoming a great priest, a wonderful bishop, who wrote many, many books, speaking of God's love and our desire to come to love God more and more each day. He said, late have I loved you, beauty so ancient, yet so new. Late in his life, he came to experience God's love for him. But he spent the rest of his life loving God in return by living a life of 
a great example to others. Great sinners with God's grace become great saints. And Augustine is a saint for all of us. And we all struggle with some vice in our life. Some are visibly present and some are invisible. It's important for us to learn from Augustine that happiness and holiness only comes from knowing God. So a couple of things that we can learn from this wonderful saint. One, that we learn from his mother that we need to pray fervently if we want to be happy and to grow in holiness. We need to pray. Secondly, we want God to send only those people into our life that will enable us to come close to Him. Because in life we are constantly meeting people who take us away from God, from this happiness. These people perhaps or these things bring us pleasure, but they do not bring us happiness. And so we want to ask the intercession of St. Augustine that God will bring into our lives those people who will help us to grow in holiness. In fact, God always brings those people into our life, but we have to pray to accept those people and what they are asking of us and bringing to us. The third thing is, the saints in heaven are praying for us. For on earth, we too must come to pray for those who are struggling in their life. You know, if, if someone has been struggling with a particular vice, and with God's grace you have overcome this vice, thanks be to God for that. But every day, pray for someone else who could be struggling with this vice. So often when God gives us the grace, to turn away from this vice, we are so happy. But we forget there are many brothers and sisters who are struggling with a similar vice in their life. So if God has graced you, given you this great gift to overcome this particular vice in your life, then it's important that you pray for those who are struggling with this vice in their life every day. So one day they too will have this conversion experience, the grace to live a life pleasing to God, the grace to be faithful witnesses of His presence. With God's grace, the greatest sinner can become the greatest saint. So let's pray for that grace in this Eucharist. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.